Hey everybody, did you miss me? You excited for your quiz? Um, this is the best day ever. Are you excited that you're, you have a quiz and your project's due on the same day? Um, you guys are probably going to be really busy, statistically speaking. Um, so, statistically speaking, let's speak of some statistics. Um, let's try this problem as a good example to maybe help you for the quiz. Um, it's a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Um, not only will this help you for the quiz, but it might very well help you for the test next Friday. Okay, so um, here's the problem. Through years of research, it is known that the GPAs of all high school students follow the distribution as given below. Do J. Sarah students follow the same distribution? Hmm. Philosoraptor thinks. Uh, we take a simple random sample of 80 J. Sarah students and, and record the following observation. So, um, looks like 30% of students, of all high school students, get less than uh, 2.0 GPA. And uh, we found eight J. Sarah students in that category, um, while 25% of students uh, get between a 2 and a 2.9. We found 22. 35% um, get uh, between a, a, a 3.0 and a, a 3.9, so we found 35 of those. And 10% get above 4.0, um, and we found 15. Smarty pants. <clears throat> So um, we're going to do these um, problems here. Uh, going to complete all these steps. We're going to complete the expected values. We're going to state the hypotheses for this chi-squared goodness of fit test. We're going to check the requirements, then calculate the test test statistic. Test statistic. Um, we're going to calculate the p-value, make our decision, and lastly, we're going to answer the question: Which category deviates most from what is expected? Pause. Huh? Just kidding. Gotcha. Um, but you can pause, of course, whenever. And I'm going to tell you when to pause. I won't tell you when to pause. You can figure out when to pause. Okay. Um, so step one was to complete the expected values. And uh, for a chi-squared goodness of fit test, the expected value is going to be n, the number of, in our sample times, I'm going to call it pi for the probability of each category. <coughs> So hopefully we got our calculator, and uh, I just got mine. And so we had 80 sampled, um, so the sample size was 80, and if 30% of all high school students get below a 2.0, then we would expect 80 times 0.3, which is 24 uh, students in our sample of 80 to have less than a 2.0. So we're going to do the same here. We're going to do for the expected value here. We're going to do 0.25 times our sample size of 80. Um, and we're going to get that number, which I could probably do in my head. It's just a quarter of 80. So it should be 20, but just in case I'm wrong. Hey, look, it's 20. Why do I doubt myself? 35%, um, that might be a little harder. So then uh, the next column we have 80 times uh, 0.35. I got 28, nice whole numbers. I like whole numbers, whole numbers are nice. And lastly, 10% of 80 is eight. I don't even need to do that math very hard. So hopefully you got these. So I just took this and I multiplied it by this and I took that and I multiplied it by 80 and I took that, multiplied it by 80 and I took that and multiplied it by 80. Now I'm gonna undo all those circles. Cool. All right, so um, we did it. We did that. We did that already. Hypotheses. So um, make sure you write your hypotheses. I should put here in context of the problem here because we're going to write these hypotheses in words, not just in math. Hey, Mr. Chef. Hey, what up, man? What's going on? Say hi. Hi. Yeah, that was Mr. Chef, and he says hi. Uh, <laughs> um, state the hypotheses. Ooh, the orange black combination looks like Halloween. Um, the hypothesis would be, so it's the distribution of blank f is as claimed. So I'm going to say that the distribution of GPAs at J. Sarah and what is claimed here, uh, the claim is that it follows the rest of the, the population. So the distribution of GPAs at J. Sarah follows um, I'll say the 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 GPA the distribution of GPAs 
distribution of um, GPAs of, uh, I'll just say, all high school students. I'm pretty exact here, so I, I want to see some exactness when you do this. Um, the alternative, and um, it would be really annoying and mean of me to make you write all this out again, um, but what is the alternative? It would be that the distribution of GPAs at J. Sarah does not follow the distribution of GPAs at um, of all high school students. So I'm going to let you get away with a, a nice one here. I'm going to just say not H-O. <laughs> it's like everything that the alternate, sorry, the null hypothesis is not. Check the requirements. See if you, oh, pause it, pause it, pause it now. Check it. Check the requirements. Okay. Unpaused. I'm going to switch from orange to what color should I choose now? Magenta? Did somebody say magenta? That's a really good idea. Let's try magenta. Um, so check the requirements. What are the requirements for a chi-squared goodness of fit test that all expected counts are greater than five? And all expected counts, and I'm going to come back here, um, all expected counts, and I'm going to go back and look at my expected counts, 24, 20, 28, and 8. 24, 20, 28, and eight are greater than five. So check. Calculate the test statistic. Um, so you definitely maybe want to pause on this one. I'll, I'll put this chart back up. You could pause and just have this screen up if you remember what it was. So pause it now. Pause it again. Unpause. Pause, unpause, unpause. Okay, so <laughs> you didn't you didn't need to do that. I'm I'm just getting silly here. Um, so the chi squared uh, statistic is, as you recall, it's the observed values minus the expected values squared divided by the expected values. So um, we had I have to kind of go back here. We observed twenty. Uh, we observed eight. We had twenty four. So we observed 8, we had um, expected 24, not we had 24, we expected 24. Um, and that was the less than 2.0. For the 3.0, we observed 22, we expected 20. So this is going to be 22 minus 20 squared divided by 20. Um, plus 35, we observed, well, we expected 28. 35 minus 28 squared over 28, and then lastly, plus, and we observed 15, we expected 8. Oop. So 15 minus Ocho squared over the expected. <clears throat> now these numbers are nice. Mr. Besseling's a nice guy, and, and he likes math, and he likes having numbers come out nice. Your book isn't so nice, but you can should be able to um, do this a little easier in your calculator. So 8 minus 24, ooh, that wasn't that hard. That's 16. So we have 16 squared. Um, oh, is it negative 16? Yeah, but we're going to square it so the negative is going to go away. So we have um, 6, did I do that right? 8 minus 24, I did. 16 squared over 24, and that's going to be plus... Um, and here's what I'm going to do, actually, before I write these all out, because I'm going to actually need this, if you saw for part C, or the last part where I asked for the biggest contributor. That's 10.67, then um, 22 minus 20 is 2, 2 squared over 4, I'm sorry, 2 squared is 4, 4 over 20 isn't even that hard, that's like, it's like a, a, a what is that, 2, 4, point two. Ugh. 4 over 20, yeah, multiply everything by 5 to get 100 on the denominator. Yeah, point 0.2. 35 minus 28 is 7. 7 squared is 49. 49 divided by 28 is 1.75. And then lastly here we have 7 squared again over 8. So that's 49 over 8. And I got uh, plus 6.25. One two five. I did this on purpose because now I, I, when I have it written out like this, I can see what my biggest contributor is. It's not very hard to see. It's my ten point six six. 
that's pretty much going to be my answer to the last part where I asked for what, what value is um, deviates most from what's expected. Add all these up together and I get a nice cool um, 18.742. Okay, so to uh, calculate the p-value, if you want to try this on your own, pause, 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 meow, pause it right meow. You cat to be kidding me. Oh, man. Bad jokes. Here they come. <laughs> so we're looking for the probability that chi-squared is greater than 18.742. How many degrees freedom do we have? Well, this, uh, for goodness of fit, it's the number of categories minus one. How many categories do we have? We have four categories. So it's going to be four minus one, which last time I checked is three. So this is going to have three degrees freedom. So this is going to be the same if I go on my calculator to chi squared CDF. And uh, my lower bound will be that test statistic. My upper bound will be infinity and beyond. And then I'm going to have three degrees of freedom. So I'm doing that right now on my calculator and I get do, 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 lower 18.742 upper na 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 degrees freedom trace paste yes I have um, 3.09 e negative 4 so e negative 4 means that um, there's three zeros we take that negative 4 we well, I think positive 4, we take one last number, 4, 3, so many zeros there are, 0, 1. All right, that's, pretty, that's a pretty small p-value. So make the decision, and um, here's the decision. Since my p-value is uh, less than my significance level, which I never did say, did I? I didn't say what my significance level is, so... Uh, right now, let's just say it's 0 0.05, right? You know it's 0 0.05 if we don't mention it. Um, and that's supposed to be a 5 there. That's a 5. Um, since my p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. So the second sentence now, you should really kind of say in terms of the alternative hypothesis. So um, there is convincing evidence... There is convincing evidence that um, J. Saris, that I should actually say the distribution of GPAs at J. Sarah distribution of GPAs at um, J. Sarah is uh, not like the rest of, not like, um, not like actually all, I'll say all high school students, all, cool, um, which category deviates most from expected, and this is, uh, and this is the, um, the less than 2.0 GPA. And again, why do we, how do we know that, coming back to here, the breakdown of the components, this is the biggest contributor to your chi-squared statistic to this number. Um, so it's really deviating far. And if you see here, this, this guy's pretty big too. Um, and this was our over 4.0. So and, while, okay, this is pretty small, and this is me. So even if you kind of look back at the chart, you can see that. I mean, we'd expect, we're supposed to be expecting 24 students with a GPA less than 2.0 in a sample of 80 when we only observed 8. And likewise, we, we'd expect only 8 with a GPA over 4.0 um, while we observed 15. So um, to me, you know, it's definitely good convincing evidence that we JCR people are just smart. Smart, 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 and hardworking. Like you guys are probably working hard right now. So I appreciate all your good work, everybody. School year's almost over. Um, and I hope you found this video useful and helpful. And I'm going to put a smiley face here at the end. All right. Good luck. Bye.